this video will cover discussion settings. Discussions are a huge part of online courses, so it's really important to understand all of the settings and how they will affect the interaction between yourself and your students on the discussion board. Let's first go into discussions and then we'll create a forum and we'll call this our test forum. Um, in the description area it's good to put um, instructions to students, things like how many posts they're required to make, when they're required to make their postings, the minimum requirements for postings, any additional resources, the discussion questions that you want them to be answering or the topics that you want them to focus on, that's all good to put in the description area. In section number two, for, forum availability. Again, we have the overall availability and the date restrictions. If you want the form to be available only during a specific date range, you'll need to check the box and set the date and time that you would like the form to be available. You'll also want to leave the availability set to yes. If it's set to no, it, the form will not be available even during the time period that you specify. So leave that at yes and if you want to restrict the dates do so below. We don't recommend setting an end date because it does sort of put a limit on student interaction on the discussion board. It kind of closes it off and then if students have something valuable to contribute later you want to encourage them to continue in investigating those concepts and, and learning more and sharing that amongst themselves. So we don't recommend an end date. Under forum settings number three you have two different view types standard view which will allow students to have access to their classmates postings um, at all times and then the participants must create their own thread in order to view the threads in the forum what this does and it has an explanation below it will not allow students to see posts that have been made by their classmates until they've made their own original post. This is helpful to prevent students from going in and sort of reading everyone else's post and then gleaning and cobbling together something instead of creating their own response to the discussion topic. The grade options are no grade in this forum, which is good for the question and answer forum or the student lounge forum that we find in a lot of courses. Most of your lesson forums will be graded, so you want to select that radio button and enter the number of points. Uh, you can choose to grade by thread, but it gets very complicated. Um, we're just going to stick with grading the forum as a whole right now. The due date will add the uh, will add an indicator on the calendar of when it's due. At this time there's only a single due date for Blackboard discussions. I know a lot of instructors will have the initial post due earlier in the week and then the response is due later in the week. Um, most instructors will choose to set the due date as that last day when all responses are due and then just um, either create a calendar appointment or add it to the schedule in the lesson to let students know that they need to do their initial posting earlier in the week. Show participants in need grading status. That's the little exclamation point that you see in the Grade Center after every one post is going to indicate that the student has submitted work that needs to be evaluated after every single post. If you want it set so that it shows after every two posts or three posts or whatever the minimum number of posts in your course is, you can. If you don't want to see that coming up after the due date for the forum has passed, so you don't want to have to be triggered to try and grade something that is already past the grading period, you can come back in here and set this up to 50 at the time um, that the grading period has passed for that assignment. You can add a rubric and we'll talk more about rubrics in the rubric lesson. 
Under the subscribe settings, this is the area that is probably the most impactful to students and the least understood by instructors. Do not allow subscriptions is not going to allow students to subscribe at all and it's really not a good option. For subscribing, you can choose by default subscribe to forum. This is helpful for instructors for the question and answer forum. That way every time someone posts in that forum you get an alert so you'll know that someone has a question and you can go and address it. The allow members to subscribe to thread is helpful for your lesson discussions that you'll do every week. It helps students it alerts them every time that a specific thread that either they've posted to or they've responded to or that they're following um, has a new post added to it. So it's very helpful to sort of continue that discussion among your students, especially if you also select the include body of post and email option. This will send not only an alert to students that a post was added to a thread that they're subscribed to, but it will also include the text of the new post. So they can determine right then whether or not they want to go in and respond, or if it doesn't add anything substantial to the conversation, they can disregard it. And it's very, very helpful. It really encourages students when they see what someone has posted, not just that that someone has posted, and they can see what has been said and they can get excited about it and go back in and post. Allowing authors to delete their own posts is an option that's really up to instructors. If you do choose to allow students to delete their own posts, only posts with no replies is the better of the two options there because that way they're not able to, to delete threads that other people have posted on. Allowing authors to edit their own published posts is really important. I wish this were an option that was on by default because students will forget to use the spell check. We're all used to the automatic red underline spell check. That doesn't happen in Blackboard. So it's helpful for students who misquoted something or they got something wrong or they noticed a typo. They can go back and clean that up. Allow members to create new threads is on by default. If you don't do that, students won't be able to post in the forum. They'll only be able to reply. So you'll have to create an initial post for them to reply to. So we want to leave that checked. Allow file attachments. That's up to the individual instructor. It can be helpful to students if they have like a related article that they want to attack. They can just add them right there. Reply with a quote. Allow students to quote other posts. So that's helpful. Um, force moderation we're not going to talk about a lot. It's not something that we use and it can get very complicated. So allow post tagging will allow students to tag posts with specific keywords. It's not a feature that's used a lot. Allow members to rate posts um, allows students to rate the posts of their fellow classmates and you as the instructor as well. It's a simple five star rating system. Students will see and the class will see on each thread the average rating so they won't know specifically who rated their post or how they each individual rated their post. It's not a requirement. Students don't have to rate each post, but it's possible. It's helpful for instructors because you can indicate which posts have um, really valuable content or something that you want other students to respond to and it encourages modeling behavior on the discussion board. And those are all the different options and how they affect your students and how they'll interact on the discussion board. I would just always advise you to thoughtfully consider each of these options when you're making a decision on how to use them and just know how they're going to affect your students and how they interact on the discussion boards because discussions are such an important part of online courses.